Okay, we are getting near the end of this course. We're going to dive into chapter 17. Okay, yes, we're skipping a lot of chapters. Um, but that's okay. If you go on to take um, Math 115, you'll cover a lot of that stuff. Or there's some other options maybe for your next best move. Um, but uh, either way you slice it, there's, there's lots of other good stuff we're skipping in this in our textbook. And... Uh, there's only so much we can do in one course. Chapter 17 is all about geometry related stuff. And actually the very first section of 17 we're also skipping. It's about lines and angles. Critically important if you're ever going to go into trigonometry or, or engineering or anything like that. Um, you know, there's a lot more math in your future if that's the case. But the only geometry we're really going to cover is, is kind of familiar territory to us. We're going to go back and look at some geometric shapes, talk about perimeter, perimeters, areas, circumference, uh, volume, and some, some basic stuff that we've really already done to some extent. We're just going to go a little bit more into it. Okay, so I want to start on section 17-2, and that's page... Oh, what is that? 718. Wow. It's like we made a lot of progress. All right. Some familiar shapes. Okay, let me pull the book over. Okay. Parallelogram, rectangle, square, rhombus, trapezoid, and triangle. Now, if this were, you know, regular class, when, when it comes time for the exam, the square, the rectangle, and the triangle are, of course, our most familiar shapes. And, and I would expect you to know formulas for perimeter and area of those shapes, and you probably already know it. Uh, but we'll look at formulas for all of them. But as far as if this were regular class again, I would expect you to memorize these three, and I would give you the other ones uh, as needed. Okay, but again, with this goofy work-from-home format, you know, it's... All bets are off on some of this stuff. But there's all the formulas, okay, on page 719. They're all there, and I'll, and I'll write them down as we need them, okay? But for all those basic shapes, there we go. So if we're asked to calculate something, we need to select the appropriate formula, substitute in the known values, right? There's lots of letters of the alphabet here. Well, if we're going to actually calculate something, we need to be told all except for one of them, and that's the one we're looking for, and we'll calculate and find it. All right, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. Let's look at example one. All right, the rear window of a pickup truck is a trapezoid. What's a trapezoid? Well, can you, you can't see over there. So we'll look at this one, that right there. It's a trapezoid whose shorter base is 40 inches, whose longer base is 48 inches, and whose non-parallel sides are each 16 inches. Okay, non-parallel means they don't run side by side, and that's what this side A and C would be. Okay, and then we have the short base and the long base, okay? Uh, and what's the question here? We want to find the perimeter of this trapezoid. Oops, sorry. Perimeter, and are we asked for area also? We are not. We're asked for perimeter. All right, well, we got a nice little formula here. So let me, let me draw a picture of a trapezoid. My artwork is, uh, you know, Da Vinci doesn't have to worry about his job with me here. I'll tell you that. All right, there's my trapezoid. So I've got A and C just to match the exact um, nomenclature they use, the exact symbols. I want to be consistent here. P for perimeter. Now they put a little subscript here of trapezoid. I'll just say trap, okay? Is what? Well, we're going to add all the sides all the way around. So I'll just follow the same order, B1 plus B2 plus A plus C, okay? So we, there we go, we know that. Well, what are we told? we got to read into the story a little bit. We're told the shorter base is 40, okay? So B1 is 40. And again, what unit are we talking? Inches. The units must be consistent if somebody tried to trick us and then gave us a unit in feet or in meters or something else. We'd have to convert and be consistent. The longer base is 48. In this case, I don't think that's going to happen. So inches and inches looks good. And then the sides are uh, they are both the same. Non-parallel sides are each 16 inches. So my drawing isn't exactly to scale, but whatever. That's fine. Okay. So there we go. Piece of cake. Perimeter. We add those four things together. So 40 inches 
plus 48 inches, plus 16 inches, plus 16 inches. Okay, it's it's almost too easy. Okay, run, crunch those numbers together, add those four numbers together, and what do we get? We get 120 inches. Okay, what do we mean by perimeter? We mean the distance all the way around. So if I measure it all the way around, it would measure 120. Okay, straightforward. Really not that tough. All right, all cool there, I hope. Let's check out example two. Now it talks about a triangle. A triangular gable of an apartment unit under construction. The triangular gables of an apartment unit under construction are outlined in, the, in contrasting trim. If each gable is 32 feet wide and 18 feet on each side, how many feet of contrasting wood trim are needed for each gable? Disregard the overlap at the corners. Okay, so it's what we call an isosceles triangle right over here on the margin. The two sides are the same length and then we have a base side. So let me, oops, let me draw that. So example two. We've got this situation. <clears throat> Those two sides are 18 feet. And then 32 feet. Again, we're asked for the perimeter. We're asked for how much trim. We're going we're gonna to put trim wood around here. And it said disregard the overlap. You know, if this were a piece of wood, we probably actually miter the corners too, right? We would have something that looks like that. Uh, how can I get this and not screw it up? Come on now. Can I do it? Can I do it? I'll screw up something. Something like that, right? So, there's a little bit of, of overlap uh, depending on how you do these. Okay, so we're, we're asked to disregard that. We're asked to just figure out the distance around. Okay, so 18 feet. 18 feet, 32 feet. Perimeter is just add those three sides together. Okay, all the dimensions are in feet, which they're all the same, so that's good. 68 feet. There we go. All right. Basic shapes. The formulas are established for how to calculate these perimeters and areas. Uh, we just have to know how to use them, okay? All right, example three now. Well, it's not a completely familiar shape, but you can tell. Uh, I forgot to turn my dumb phone down again, sorry. You can tell that there's shapes in there, right? I mean, that's like an L-looking shape, but you can picture that how we could turn that into a couple of rectangles quite easily. Okay, and that's how we're going to figure this out. All right, so let's look at the shape in example three. Okay, it looks something like this. I won't try to draw it exactly, but we're given some information. We're given 3.4 meters here. We're given 6.2 meters there, 4.7 meters there, 3.8 meters there. We're not given this side, that's mystery side B, and then this is mystery side A over here, okay? Find the missing dimensions. Um, what did I just do? What in the world did I just do? Oh, I'm looking at the stop check. Shoot, my bad. Well, we'll do the stop check in the margin of example 720. Sorry about that. I'm like, wait a minute. The picture makes no sense at all. I'm looking at the margin on page 720, the stop and check, okay? Find the missing dimensions A and B, okay? We'll do the example next. Well, there's kind of two ways to slice it here. Well, we don't even have to figure out too much here because we know what A and B are. This, this length A, that's the entire length of this long side. Well, it's the same as this little length plus that little length, right? So A is going to be 6.2 meters plus 3.8 meters. Okay, can everybody see that? It's just this length 
plus that length is going to be the entire length, A. Okay, well, what's that going to be? That'll be uh, uh, zero. It's meters, of course. That'll be a zero, and then we'll carry. We'll get 10.0 meters, okay, or 10 meters. All right, what about length B? Again, the long side is going to consist of that little short side plus that little short side. 3.4 meters plus 4.7 meters is going to be, again, the unit of meter. We'll get a 1 there, and we'll get 8.1 meters. Okay, all good. That's how we do a problem like that. We'll break it up into familiar looking shapes. Okay, now let's do the example. Same basic looking shape, except we're told 5 feet 6 inches. Ooh, we might have to convert between feet and inches here. We don't know that side. We don't know that side. Three feet, six inches. Not now. Eight feet, six inches. And 12 feet, six inches. Okay, so there's our problem. We're asked to figure out what X and Y are. Well, again, we can just think of these as little little shapes here, right? I mean, I could think of that as, here is this rectangle, okay? I know the one long side is 8 feet 6 inches, so that's going to be 3 feet 6 inches plus the mystery X, right? So 8 feet 6 inches equals 3 feet 6 inches plus my mystery side X there. So I just need to subtract... Uh, again, we have to we have to watch our units here. I got feet and inches, but it's actually going to work out nicely in this case because you see the inches are just going to kind of disappear there. So I'm just going to have eight feet minus three feet is going to be five feet. So x equals five feet in this case. Okay, all good there. Now, what about our other missing side? What about y? Well. The whole big long side here is 12 feet 6 inches. That little side there is 5 feet 6 inches. So I know that, let me just sneak it in here. 12 feet 6 inches equals 5 feet 6 inches plus whatever y is. So how do I solve for y? I subtract. Again, we could have had a, a, a complication here of feet and inches not not matching up exactly, and we'd have to do a little converting, okay? And we've done that in previous um, sections. But in this case, the inches are work out nicely. They're gone, so I'm just going to have 7 feet for my value of y, okay? And that's how we do a problem like that. All right. Sweet. So perimeter, we add the sides, right? Um, and our page 721, example 4 now, is asking us to calculate a perimeter. Example 4 on page 721, calculate the perimeter of some goofy looking shape. That little shape, okay, it's again like an L-shaped figure. We know some of the dimensions, we don't know a couple of them, so we need to figure out the missing dimensions and then figure out the perimeter. Find the number of feet of 4-inch stock needed for the base plates of a room that has a layout shown in figure 17-40 uh, there. Make no allowances for openings when calculating linear footage of the base plate. So that's just saying, just figure out the perimeter of this, you know, room, this, this odd-shaped room. Figure out the perimeter. Well, i got a couple of missing sides there. So first we need to figure that out. So let me get my basic shape going here. Okay, what do I know here? 24 feet. I know 15 feet. Mystery length Y. Mystery length X. 9 feet. 7 feet. This is pretty easy, right? I mean, it really is. We've done stuff like this. So I'm missing a couple of sides, right? Side x, if I take the 7 feet plus the x feet, it's going to be my total side height of 15 there. So 7 feet plus x equals 15 feet. Subtract my 7 feet, and I'm going to get x equals 8 feet, right? So I'll sneak it in here, 8 feet. Okay, same thing with y. What do we know? I know that... Uh, 9 feet here plus y more feet, 9 feet plus
plus y feet equals altogether 24 feet. That's the length of my bottom side. Subtract 9 feet from both sides. y equals 15 feet. Okay, so I'll sneak that in there, 15 feet. So now I'm asked to figure out the perimeter. Okay, now that I know these two pieces of information, perimeter is pretty simple. Add all the sides up. Okay, I'm going to leave the, the unit of feet off here. Everything's in feet. So 7 plus 9 plus 8 plus 15 plus 15 plus 24. They're all feet. Okay, and if we crunch those numbers, we will get 78 feet. Okay, there we go. Just that easy. Okay. I'm looking around here. All right, that's it for perimeter area. Let's do an area problem here on this video, and then we'll do some more on the next one. Okay, area is talking about how much surface does something cover. Okay, perimeter meant get out your tape measure or your ruler and measure all the way around. Area means how much surface are on my covering. So the units of area are typically square something. Square inches, square meters, square feet, square miles. Okay, almost every unit of area has that word square in it. The only one I can think of offhand that doesn't is the word acre. I have an acre of property that doesn't have the word square in it, but there is a direct conversion between acres and square feet or square miles or square whatever. Okay, so it's, uh, I don't know the history of the word acre, where it comes from, but for whatever reason it doesn't have that word square in it, but there is a direct conversion to get to it. Okay, so here's a bunch of formulas for area. This is page 722. Okay. Parallelogram, rectangle, square, rhombus, trapezoid, triangle, all those formulas for area. There's a special one here. Uh, we know the triangle area is one half base times height. Okay, but if we have a situation where we don't know that height and all we know are the length of the three sides, there's another formula here we can use. Okay, now I would never expect you to memorize this one. This one I would have. Okay, your basic square, rectangle, and triangle, I would have expected you to memorize those formulas. Okay, not this one down here, but uh, we'll use it. Okay, so let's talk about example five. On page, what did I say, 722. I'm sure you're going to be delighted when all these videos are over just as much as me, right? It's really weird sitting here at my little desk in my basement talking to myself and uh, working problems. It's weird. All right, example five. Find the area of a trapezoid. Okay, well, let me kind of draw it here. We've got uh, this, this, this. Uh, we're told that this is nine centimeters on the top. We're given a height here. Okay, a little dash line, four centimeters high, centimeters, and thirteen on the bottom. Okay, so there's our picture. Find the area of a trapezoid. Now that formula may not be like totally on our mind, and this is what I would not ask you to remember. Area of a trapezoid is one half of the height times, in parentheses, the base one plus the base two. Okay, so area, one half height times B1 plus B2, where these are the two bases, the top base and the bottom base, and then H is the height. So we have all the information, easy peasy, nine centimeters, I'm going to leave the units now, um, look at that, I plugged in the wrong one, that should be four centimeters for the height, right? And then 9 centimeters plus 13 centimeters. I'm leaving the units in purposely to make sure it makes sense to me here. So, order of operations, I'm going to do inside that parentheses first. So I'm going to leave my 4 centimeters alone. I'm going to take my 9 centimeters plus my 13 centimeters. Okay? What is that going to give me? 22 centimeters. All right? Centimeter plus centimeter equals centimeter. All right? Fair enough. Now I'm going to multiply these three numbers together, okay? Multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two, right? So it's really four divided by two is two, and then two times 22 is going to give me 44. 
but centimeter times centimeter gives me centimeters squared, okay, or squared centimeters. Okay, so the units of area should always have a unit squared, a length squared, and we do in this case, okay? So it kind of makes sense from that standpoint, from a unit analysis, a dimensional analysis, and the number looks pretty good also, okay? All right, that's how we do the area of a trapezoid. Let me ponder. Yes, okay, I'm going to stop this video here, and then I'll pick up on the next video, and we'll do some more areas.